Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So uh, there was a thread that came in that had to do with uh, 3D, uh, basically 3D profiling the way that I understood it and uh, how to, you know, machine around this shape, around this boss, uh, kind of like uh, side roughing on a profile but in 3D. So to begin with, you know, uh, it's kind of neat little shape, so I don't spend a lot of time on CAD with Bobcad, but uh, I'm going to go through a quick example of how to create this part, and then we'll get into the tool path. So, I'm going to just start a new file here, and I'm going to draw a 10 by 10, um, uh, 10 by 10 square, and then uh, I'm going to draw a circle here, let's kind of move this back. looks all right and then we'll draw another circle here let's make this one two uh, we'll make that zero that's fine and then we'll make another one let's say uh, one two three four that's fine all right so we have a couple circles in a square here let me uh turn my grid off Okay, uh, line tangent from here to here, here to there, here. Uh, do that again. Line tangent here to here, here to here. All right, and then I'll just uh, trim up some of this stuff here. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. This shape. That shape. That shape. There's a couple of other little pieces I want to get rid of here. You know, um, alright, so that kind of gives me the profile that I was after. I want to stretch this rectangle a little bit, so I'm going to do utility stretch, or the square. We're going to do uh, multi entities, horizontal, vertical, and drag, and I'm just going to grab this section here and kind of pull that out. And I'm going to grab this section here and kind of pull that out a little bit okay all right so that looks good so there's there's my wireframe so then from here I'm gonna create a new layer and uh, I'm gonna generate uh, uh, you know a surface here so we'll do surface extrude minus two grab that okay that looks good so now um, I'm gonna generate a UCS add new UCS, I'm going to use three points, so I'm going to move my mouse over this edge, shift, left click, I'll grab the snap point, so there's one, two, three, okay, so now I'm drawing on that face, then I'm going to do normal to active UCS, alright, that looks alright, so let's add another layer here, I'm going to do line, sketch, horizontal, and I'll do one from here to here to here, and then I'll do another one from here to there. Okay, so that gives me those two lines, and then I'll do spline blended from there to there. That looks alright, and then now I'm just going to do line sketch uh, vertical, so we'll do one here, and one here, sketch horizontal, we'll do one there, and then come around and just trim up this profile. Alright. Okay. So now, now I have that profile to cut the shape. Uh, I'll add uh, another layer, and then I'll do surface extrude, this is going to be minus 10 grab that shape there. Alright, so we got that. I'll come back to my top UCS here. I'm going to boolean out these two shapes, so we'll do solid, uh, solid, subtract, keep this shape, subtract. Uh, let me do that again. Solid, subtract, keep this one, subtract that one. So that gives me that curved profile. And then uh, from here, let's see. From here, I'm just going to uh, do a surface extrude. 
uh, minus 1.5. All right, and that will give me that shape. And I can turn that one off solid, add this to this. So that gives me my, my profile shape here. Okay, now that we've gone through the design stage, uh, let's look at some of the machining. So I'm going to turn off these other layers here that I don't need. I'll go ahead and run my stock wizard and set up where my origin is. Okay. Based off the thread, the, the tool path that comes to mind right off the bat would be our pencil tracing, where we're trying to clean up the intersection of the floor surface and the boss. So this is a pretty easy thing to set up. I'm going to just drop some tolerances down and I'll compute this and we'll see we get a single tool path and that's going to run along the intersection of the floor and the boss. Okay, now if there's extra material, uh, extra material there, uh, we, may, we may want to take multiple passes. So I'm going to come back in here and under parameters we can say multiple passes. I'm going to say 20 passes and I'm going to make them at 50 thou. And the reason why I'm doing that is when you do set multiple passes, it, it doesn't just work from the outside in. It's actually going to work from the floor surface and also the wall surface. So uh, I don't, you know, I, I'm a, I've exaggerated my settings here, but I don't know if that's exi exactly what he wants as well. Okay. So let's, uh, let's blank that one out, come back in, and let's add the planar tool path. Okay. So now with the planar tool path, what we're looking to do is give it an inside and an outside boundary. So instead of doing it in this section here, I'm just going to sketch uh, two circles over here. And that was what one of the complaints was, is that the software was ignoring the inside boundary. Now, again, this would, in my opinion, this would not be the ideal scenario to clean up this intersection as well because we're going back and forth so you're going to get a bunch of air time but the software should identify that inside boundary and really and it's not doing it right now um, but what it should do is go to the clearance and then come over and come back down so even though it's not identifying the inside boundary uh, it's still not an optimal path. We're going back and forth, and what we want to do is clean up some extra material that is left on these uh, floor surfaces to the to the wall surfaces. So uh, let's go ahead and blank that one out, and then uh, let's look at adding an equidistant. Okay, so uh, let's drop this down. Choose next. We have our tool, our cut parameters. This is something that we definitely want to look at. I'm just going to drop down my tolerance and um, we'll go ahead and finish. Now I have this boundary that I used for the planer before and I'm just going to start with these two boundaries and compute this path. And what you're going to see is that the tool path will be generated between the two boundaries and uh, they're going to work their way out based off the cut pattern, whether it's from the outside in or the inside out or bottom top, etc. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to create two boundaries that are going to represent this shape here. So let me uh, uh, blank this tool path out. I'm going to go to a top view. I'm going to turn on my wireframe layer. And the first thing I'm going to do is generate an offset. And uh, due to rounding errors and things like that, I'm just going to, um, I'm cutting with a half inch cutter, so I'm just going to add uh, an amount to keep the tool away from the wall, and then I'll add a distance that I want to cut in, be in between. Uh, shift click, space bar, space bar. Okay, so now we have our boundary, and instead of using this boundary over here, we're going to just remove that, reselect, go from here to here and then we're going to recompute. And what that will do is generate it. I believe this is the tool path type that uh, 
uh, that the poster was interested in, where they're looking for a path that will work its way in from the outside uh, to clean that up. Where again, we could use pencil, uh, but that will climb the wall as well. Maybe, maybe perfect for what we're looking for, but this is using equidistant with a boundary would be the way that I would go. If there's any comments, uh, feedback, reply back to the thread, the Facebook or YouTube page. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to me already, uh, go ahead and do that now. Thank you so much, guys.